All right, so we're back to section 1.7, and this is going to be the second video in this section. So if you'll go down to quadratic inequalities, this is what we're going to deal with next. Quadratic inequalities are just simply when you have a quadratic written with an inequality. That's, that's all that we're dealing with here. Um, but let's talk about the how-to. How do you solve a quadratic inequality? Step number one, first of all, just solve... Uh, the quadratic as though it were actually an equation with an equal sign, not with a greater than or a less than or anything like that. Solve it as though it's just a normal equation. Step number two, figure out the intervals determined by the solutions. I'll show you what that means in a minute. That doesn't mean a whole lot right now, probably. And then step number three, use a test value and a posneg chart from each interval to determine which intervals form the solution set. Again, that doesn't mean a whole lot right this minute, um, but let's start with step number one. Let's just solve like normal. So when I'm looking at example number five, you'll notice here that I have the quadratic and it's less than or equal to zero. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna solve this as though it's just a normal equation. And usually something this simple, I would choose factoring on this because my brain already can see what the factors are. So if I go ahead and factor, notice I change it to an equal sign because I'm treating it like it's a normal equation right now. And um, when I solve this, um, I'm gonna get an X is equal to a negative three, or an x is equal to a 5. All right, so that takes care of step one. Step number two says identify intervals determined by the solutions of the equation. All right, here's the English version. Get a number line with your solutions on it first, and then break up the rest of the number line with intervals. Watch what I mean on this. So the first thing that we're going to do is I've got a number line, and notice that on my number line, I have my two solutions, the x equals negative 3 and the 5. Um, make sure you put them in order on your number line, the way they would fall on a normal number line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break up the rest of the number line into intervals. So all of this piece of the number line starts at negative infinity, and it goes all the way up right next to negative 3. So my interval will be from negative infinity to negative 3. And then the next piece of my number line that doesn't have a name is going to be the pieces between negative 3 and 5. And so that's going to be from negative 3 up to 5. Notice I'm not overlapping here at all. I'm just using every piece of the number line. And then the last part of the number line is going to be starting right after 5 all the way to positive infinity. So that will be from 5 to infinity. So that's all step 2 is telling you to do. Um, identify the intervals determined by the solution. So we took our number line and we broke them into intervals. Now what I'm going to do, before I do step number 3, um, the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to make a list and I'm going to use my factors in this list. So up here, this is where we had our factors. All right, so I'm going to use my factors in this list. Step number three says use a test value from each interval to determine which intervals form the solution set. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Pick a value in here. Um, oh, I don't know, negative 4, negative 100, negative 1,000, negative a million. Just pick something in that interval, and you're going to go plug that in um, to your list of factors. Now, when you plug it in, the only thing that you're going to write down is a positive, a negative, or a zero. So when I take, let's say that I'm going to go easy. Let's go negative 10. Plug in a negative 10. Right here, a negative 10 plus a 3 gives me a negative number, okay? A negative 10 minus a 5 gives me a negative number, all right? So I'm using something from my uh, number line to plug into my factors. Now, the next one I'm going to plug in is this one, okay? So if I plug in a negative 3, a negative 3 plus a 3 gives me 0, a negative 3 minus a 5 gives me a negative, all right? 
Next interval. Pick a number inside of this interval. I love picking zero because it's such an easy number to plug in. So let's pick zero. If I plug in a zero, zero plus three is a positive number. Zero minus five is a negative number. The next number I'm gonna plug in is a five. Whoops. Five plus three is a positive number. Five minus five is zero. Remember, your only options, you're gonna get either a positive, a negative, or a zero. Last but not least, let's go to that last interval. Pick a number, pick six, pick 10, pick 1,000, pick 572. Just pick anything inside of this interval. I'm gonna choose a 10. If I choose 10 plus three, this is gonna be a positive number. If I choose a 10 and it's 10 minus five, this is still gonna be a positive number, okay? So the inside of my POSNEG chart is now complete. The last thing that I'm gonna do, notice my factors are being multiplied together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna multiply my factors together, and I'm really only gonna be multiplying my POSs and my NEGs together. So ask yourself, what is a negative times a negative? Ah, it's a positive. What's zero times a negative? Well, zero times anything is zero. What is a positive times a negative? Hmm, negative. What is a positive times zero? Anything times zero is zero. And what's a positive times a positive? It's positive. All right, now here's the very last step. I'm trying to find where does this product, where is it less than or equal to zero? Remember, less than zero is negative. So where is it less than or equal to zero? Well, let's see. It's equal to zero here. It's less than zero here. And it's equal to zero here. Now, let's go back up to the instructions. Um, and usually, it doesn't actually say on this set of instructions. I thought it did. Um, but usually what we have here is we're just going to write out our solution set in an interval. So I'm going to be starting at the first value that makes my product equal to zero. So that's going to be a negative three. I am allowed to equal this negative three, so I'm gonna use a bracket on it. And I'm gonna use all of the numbers all the way up to the second one that causes zero, and that's gonna be all the way up to five. That is our solution. Let's do another one. So once again, we have another quadratic. Um, factoring is the best, 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 best format for this, folks. And so um, let's go ahead and factor this. It will factor to 3x plus 1 times x minus 4. For now, step number one, just solve it normally. So you have your two mini equations. If you solve 3x plus 1 equals 0, you'll get a negative 1 third. If you solve x minus 4 equals 0, you get a 4. Step number two, let's put these on a number line and get some intervals. All right, so here's my number line. And my intervals, this first one, remember this is all of the numbers all the way right up next to negative one third. So this will be from negative infinity to negative one third. And then we want all the numbers in between. So that's gonna be from negative one third to four. And then my last interval is going to be all the numbers from 4 to infinity. So that's going to be from 4 to infinity. So that's step two, get your intervals. Now let's go ahead and make a list of our factors. So when we make a list of our factors, that's the 3x plus 1 and the x minus 4. And here's where you're going to get some little test values. All right, so let's pick a number in this interval. How about negative 10? So if I plug in a negative 10 here, 3 times negative 10 plus 1, that's going to give me a negative number. 
If I plug in a negative 10 here, negative 10 and negative 4 is going to give me a negative number. Then let's plug in this number next. Well, I already know that this number is a solution to this factor because that's exactly what we just found. And so I know that this guy's going to cause zero. Uh, a negative one third plugged in here, negative one third, negative four is going to give me a negative. This one, um, again, I can, I can choose a zero. Now I can't always choose zero here, but I can on this one. So let's choose a zero to plug in. You plug in a zero here, three times zero plus one, and you get a positive number. Here, a zero minus four still gives you a negative number. Next, let's go ahead and plug in four. So a three times four plus a one is gonna be positive. A four minus a four is zero. Last but not least, pick a number inside of this interval. Let's say 10. So again, three times 10 plus one, this is gonna be positive. And 10 minus four is still gonna be positive. All right, so that's the inside of our POSNEG chart. Now we're ready for step number three, where we go ahead and we multiply our factors together. We multiply our signs together. Neg times neg is pos. Zero times neg is zero. Pos times neg is neg. Pos times zero is zero. Pos times pos is pos. Notice I'm looking for all of the numbers greater than zero or all of the positive incidences. So anything here is positive and anything here is positive. So when I go then and write my intervals, just use what you have written up above here. So my first interval is going to be from negative infinity to negative one third. Remember when you have two, you combine these with a union. And we will also use from four to infinity. Um, just a little side note here, um, inequalities that use just a plain old greater than or less than, these are called strict inequalities. And inequalities that have an equal sign in them are called non-strict. So in case you run into that in my lab, um, you'll know what it's talking about. All right, example seven. So let's do this with um, the exact same process, only now we're going to do this with a story problem. So you have a projectile launched from ground level. It's got an initial velocity of 144 feet per second. The height is S in feet. Okay, so this is an important piece. And T is going to be the time measured in seconds. And then I'm given an equation. So when is the projectile going to be greater than 128 feet? When is the projectile, or you could say the height of the projectile, when is it going to be greater than 128 feet? So the first thing that we'll do is let's go ahead and write the height of uh, our projectile. We get that from here. So there's the height. S, remember, is height. So we have height is greater than 128. Now, what I did on this one, I noticed that all three of these terms um, have a GCF of negative 16. So what I did to make my numbers smaller, I divided on both sides by negative 16. Now I'm going to reduce each piece. So that first piece, negative 16 T squared over negative 16, this is just going to be a plain old positive T squared. When you reduce this, remember, share the love from earlier sections. This is going to turn into a negative 9t. And then this piece is going to turn into um, a negative 8. All right, so let me go ahead and unhide that. Now you'll notice, hopefully you notice that I made a mistake here um, because at this point, um, this is no longer, since I divided on both sides by um, a negative number, this is actually, I had to switch the signs. So I made a mistake on that one. All right, and so then the next thing we'll do is we'll get everything on one side. And again, I need to fix that. 
and then we can go ahead and solve. I like to solve these by factoring because I'm gonna need factors anyway. And so um, if I solve by factoring, I'll have a t minus eight and a t minus one. Remember, when I start the solving of the quadratic, I'm really only looking at it as a normal equation. So then my two solutions are going to be t equals eight or t equals one. So then let's go ahead and put those onto my number line with my intervals, just like we did in the last few questions. We'll make a list of our factors. And then after we um, are gonna make a list of our factors and get our pauses and our negs, then we'll multiply our factors together. So let's go ahead then and fill out our chart. If you're going to choose something in this interval, let's say maybe you want to choose zero. So a zero minus eight is negative. A zero minus one is negative. Then let's choose this one. A one minus eight is negative. A one minus one is zero. In the next interval, let's choose, I don't know, a two. Two minus eight is negative. Two minus one is positive. Choose your eight next. Eight minus eight is zero. Eight minus one is positive. Last but not least, choose uh, any number to the right of eight. So I don't know, let's say a 10. 10 minus eight is positive. 10 minus one is positive. So now let's go ahead and multiply. We've got positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. Notice, okay, so I've still made a mistake, so I'm still correcting that mistake all the way through. This is actually going to be um, the less than symbol. Okay, so we're looking for all of the places where the multiplication is less than zero, okay? So that means that we want just this piece right here, which corresponds to this interval up here. So we're gonna have from one to eight. Since this was a story problem, let's go back and read what it asked us when will the projectile be greater than 128 feet above ground level? This is going to occur from one second to eight seconds. 